Welcome to the 401k Marketing Podcast. Are you ready to be the go-to expert in the retirement plan community? Listen in as we share ideas, resources, and best practices that you can use to professionalize your firm, demonstrate your authority, and earn more 401k business. You've heard the phrase search engine optimization, or maybe you've just heard SEO. Well, either way, it is something everyone who uses the internet should understand. Your host, Rebecca Auerhan, talks with Missy Schodel today about the importance of the strategy and getting found online. Thanks, Patrice. Hi, everyone. This is Rebecca with 401k Marketing. We're here to talk to you today about search engine optimization. Uh, before we dive in, I want to share a very quick story. So I was just at Napa Summit in Tampa, Florida about last week, connecting with awesome retirement plan advisors, industry friends, and I had this really great, great conversation with a producing TPA. So he's an advisor and his TPA. And we're talking about marketing. And he's like, you know, we need this. We, we actually, we've been growing from lots of different client referrals and centers of influence introductions, but where you're talking about content, it's something we've thought about, but we've never done it. Can you, do you mind following up with me afterwards? I say, absolutely. Yeah. Once I get back to the office, I will give you uh, a call or send you an email and we'll connect. Okay. So I'm, I'm a pretty good Googler. I got the guy's name. I know his company name. I know where they're based in the United States of America. And I go to the the Google and I type in all this great keyword information. I spent 10 minutes searching for this advisor. Nada. Could not find him at all all. Uh, Guys, I had his name, his company name and location, and I got goose egg over and over again. So that's why we're here today. We're going to talk about how to get found online because I'm a person who wanted to have a sales conversation with them. Could you imagine if I was a client or a prospect? Are they going to spend 10 minutes searching? No, no. So we want to make sure that when someone is looking for you online, you come up first every single time. So with that, I'm going to introduce Missy Schodel for today's conversation. And I want to ask you, Miss, how do kind of give us a little bit of a, of a background on what is SEO and how do these search engines work? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I mean, the the story of being a ghost online is all too often. Everybody knows how to Google things, but the actual like the inner workings of it are kind of kind of complex. Google's algorithm actually has like 200 plus ranking factors that are worked into this complex uh, algorithm to spit out the best results. So, I mean, at the end of the day, Really, search engine optimization is the process of trying to come up first. Um, When somebody's thinking of you, thinking of a search keyword or a search phrase, um, what Google wants to do is essentially connect your words with the most relevant and most trustworthy source. So for SEO, search engine optimization, your strategy should really be to identify your keywords that you want to rank for and have have the internet spit you out at the end of it. So, <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much, uh, pretty much the story there. I think the yeah. concept around keywords is so interesting because yeah. when you hear that, the term might be the term keywords might be intimidating. Keywords right. are are it's a fancy word for saying what are the identifiers of you. So your name. Yes. What's your name? That is your primary keyword. So if someone types your name into Google, you show up on Google. Exactly. The next keyword is your business, your business name. So if they type that into or any reasonable guess, you know, all of us the spelling is. <laughs> It's a, it's a good time. So whatever your business name is, that's your second keyword. That, that's the most important. Yeah. And then as, and then as you get more down the road, you think of like retirement plan advisor, fiduciary in, uh, investment monitoring, retirement plan committee, and other attributes that fit back to your sub keywords. So combine them all together. And now you have an SEO strategy. 
Absolutely. Interestingly enough, because we're in such a high referral business, most advisors, when they look at their, well, when we look at most advisors' um, organic search history and what queries or what search terms people are typing into Google to find them, they are what are called navigational keywords. And that's just fancy for uh, basically a uh, navigational keyword is you know what you're looking for or you know the business name or the person's name. So fancy for your name, business name. (laughs) And those are essentially your top keywords. I would say if anybody is starting to look into SEO, those are the first things you need to own. Uh, Those are the first things that you need to really focus on to own those because we don't want a repeat of Rebecca's story for every single (laughs) advisor, you know? So those are like the first things that you want to um, identify and start to make sure that that you're ranking for those. Um, So I have an email open, which is basically my way of taking notes. (laughs) And I write out keywords. That's my first thing. And then underneath it, I write my name. I write my company name Mm -hmm. and maybe a couple of other things in there where I'm located, the type of fiduciary advisor that I am, retirement plan advisor. And I go, okay, great. Now I've got these these five things here. So my name, my company name, uh, retirement plan advisor, where I'm located, and then how I support my clients. Great. Five things. Well, is there a free tool online that maybe I could go to to figure out, do the words that I just wrote down, are those what the internet, how do I rank on the internet based on those five, five keywords? Is there maybe like a free Google tool out there that I could check out to see, to learn more? Yeah. Um, so Google search console is your best friend for, um, organic search results for seeing where you rank for certain things. I would say that's a good first, first step. It's free. Um, It connects to your website. Um, So there is some connection things that you have to do to make sure that they are all connected, but it's fairly simple. Um, So Google Search Console, the coolest thing that I love with that is you go to the Google Search Console and you can look up your top queries uh, is what it's called. So it's under search results. This is your organic search Um, history. This is what people are actually typing into Google. And you can see where you rank for those things. You can organize it by keyword. You can organize it by number of clicks. So you can see, you know, how, how many clicks those keywords get and you can organize it by how many views. So it'll also give you a indication of where you rank on that. So that's, you know, a tool that you can use. Another tool that's super cool um, for keyword research that you can get like free trials to is SEMrush. They have advanced, advanced stuff in there, but there's also some really cool stuff for keyword research for understanding yours. So you can do that for free also. Um, That's another really cool, powerful, kind of a bit of a rabbit hole of a tool, (laughs) but it's it's a really cool one. What I like about the, so first and foremost, Google Search Console. It's free, Mm -hmm. easy, links to your website, gives you kind of a high level overview. Great. Yep. Second is uh, SEMrush, which is S-E-M-R-U-S-H, free Mm -hmm. trial. And what I like about the SEMrush one is when we talk about search, there's a search for the first page of Google. But then what if someone tabs over and they're like, hey, what do you look like? And they want to see your images, or maybe you have a presentation or a recorded webinar, or, you know, maybe you had a video present video recording of you. So they click on YouTube, second most search, second most search search engine there is. That's Mm -hmm. a lot of searching. Uh, (laughs) Well, on the SEMrush platform, when you type in your keywords, your name, it'll show you across the different search results, first page of Google, which is text, uh, images, as well as video, where you appear and how you rank as well. Mm -hmm. So when you're thinking about your clients who are looking for you, your prospects who are looking for you, or anyone else who's trying to get in touch with you, how do they look for that information online? Well, with that SEMrush feature, you can actually see um, different dimensions of the results that show up for you. Absolutely. Tips, Missy. 
Yeah. Um, let's switch gears a little bit and talk about content marketing here. So content marketing is a fancy way of saying uh, materials that are online that you are associated with. So like an article, an infographic, I talked about webinars just a second ago, a video, and your name is attached to that piece of content. So Missy, why is content marketing so critical for SEO? It's an opportunity to get out there for more keywords, for more information. So the way I like to think about it is every single web page that you create has a focused keyword. So your home page, that is your company name, your about us page, that's going to feature each of your team members and their name. So those are dedicated pages to certain things. Uh, when you look at your website, you probably have a different pages pages for each of the services you offer. So 401ks, wealth management, financial wellness. So those are kind of those dedicated keywords for each of those for each of those sections of your business, for your company, for yourself. And then content marketing is an opportunity to really expand your range. So it's a good rule to stick to one to two keywords or topics for each of your pages. So when you create a piece of content, say you're talking about, you had mentioned like fiduciary advisors. Mm -hmm. If you have a fiduciary checklist, perhaps something like that, when that piece of content is created, it's created around a series of keywords that are in that topic. And so now this is your opportunity to really hone in on that and own that space with that search query, with that keyword, with that phrase, and you have that dedicated page for that. So from an SEO perspective, from a search perspective, it's really good to have a wide range of content that talks about all sorts of different areas where you can focus on a myriad of topics, um, <laughs> wide range to show your your breadth and depth of knowledge. So one way as a retirement plan advisor, if you're trying to identify keywords, mm -hmm. uh, come up with the top five questions that a plan sponsor asks you. Just the top five, like off the top of your head, I'm sure you can come up with them. Yep. Uh, maybe the first one is, uh, what does a retirement plan advisor do? And then you write content that supports that question. Uh, when someone types words into Google, if you use the language that plan sponsors use, so the actual words that your clients are asking you, that's going to create a natural bridge between technology and human, human, humanism, <laughs> us as people. Uh, and that's the name of your article, or that's the name of your piece of content, because you want to hit exactly what folks are Googling for. Missy mentioned earlier that Google's trying to give the searcher the results that they want from the most credible source. And if you can capitalize on that by literally taking the top questions that your clients are asking you, that's one way that you can rank higher every time yeah. on Google. <clears throat> and that's, that's so true. Like you can go into Google and type in you know, one of your top questions that you get from plan sponsor, prospects, clients, type it into Google and see what comes up, mm -hmm. what type of content already exists, then scroll down a little bit. And there's this little feature on Google that'll say people also asked. Those are more questions that people that Google is relating to that question. And so you can look at those types of things and go, hmm, that would be a good idea for a piece of content. It's also nice to get out of your box sometimes because we have a lot of industry jargon uh, that we use and we talk about when we you know, talk to our peers, but it doesn't always resonate. So this is a good opportunity to see what's corrected. I was, I was looking up something the other day and I was like, hmm, what do people Google when they're thinking <laughs> about this? And so I go to type in investment allocation, and Google did not spit out a single resu result that said investment allocation, it said asset allocation. And so that's what people are searching. Um, so just little things like that, like how are, how are 
normal Googlers uh, looking for things. We were working on our uh, Women in Retirement series, is what Missy's referring to here. And we have a whole section, um, the call to action section, which is to help uh, the people who are reading. uh, The It's going to be a four-page Four page overview or four page brochure on uh, how to rebalance their portfolio and how to look at it objectively. Are you saving enough? Um, right. Are you, um, is your asset allocation appropriate? And then, um, so if it's not, you know, how do you rebalance? And then the last section talks about projected income. So, what does that look like? Uh, women generally live longer than men. So, there's a longevity risk associated with that. And that's what that uh, piece of content uh, Missy's talking about. And so, you know, hey, we're marketing firm and we Google stuff all the time too, to make sure that we're hitting the right notes uh, for what people are saying and understanding out in, out in the real world. Well, let's, um, let's leap ahead a little forward and let's talk about social media. So SEO, search engine optimization is not the same as social media, but they are friends. They complement each other. So how does uh, social media, and let's kind of talk about LinkedIn, because that's the business to business professional networking service. How are those two, um, how are those two friends? So if you're looking at technical SEO it, it's not the same. But when you think about online reputation and what gets spit out um, of the Google machine, LinkedIn has a really strong authority, I guess you can say, a very strong authority. So if you were to type in your name, chances are your LinkedIn profile and your company would come up in the first few, the first couple of results on the Google page. So essentially it it doesn't necessarily do anything for your website SEO, but it does build your online reputation. And at the end of the day, that's what we're looking for. What we're looking for is not being a ghost on, on the internet, being able to be found. And so uh, LinkedIn specifically really helps build your online reputation. It'll be probably number one or two if you were to Google your name. Also, when you publish on LinkedIn, uh, you can use that to create links back to your website. And those links talk to each other or basically in the uh, in the web that is the internets, they, they talk to each other. So if you can associate a hyperlink back to your web page, back to a blog article that you've posted and kind of use that as this own little ecosystem, it'll talk round and round and provide those links back to your website so that Google understands that you are who you say you are. So when somebody uh, goes to look for you, you come up and it all is uh, verified. So I would say one thing to that as well, and I'm sure we've said this on various presentations. I talk to advisors about it all the time. Make your name the same. (laughs) If you are, so my full name is Melissa, and nobody calls me that unless if I'm in trouble or talking (laughs) to my father. So... (laughs) Nobody knows me as Melissa. If I were to, you know, hand a business card that said Melissa, you could search the internet and it probably won't be there. But same if I wanted to look professional and I said on LinkedIn, I'm Melissa Schodel. If somebody types in Missy, those are not the same. They only share a couple of letters. And so, you know, things like you would think that Michael and Mike We know in our minds that those are the same. The ones and twos might not connect on the interwebs. Yeah. So if you, um, we, this is what we've done at conferences. We jokingly say, if you, if you right now, you take your, your, uh, your right hand, you go to shake someone's hand and you say, hi, my name is whatever name that you just shared. That's the name that you should be using online. And Mm -hmm. if it's Missy Schodel, right. Right, Missy Shuttle. If it's Melissa, then write Melissa because, as Miss just mentioned, the ones and the twos of the internet. Uh, well, we know that they are the same name, proper name, and uh, they, they don't. The internet doesn't know. They're just numbers and letters trying to connect, trying to give the right information. Hey, I'll add one more thing on the 
um, LinkedIn and <clears throat> SEO component of it. On LinkedIn, uh, there's a feature where it's contact information. It's on your profile. It's on your home page, your profile page on LinkedIn. Uh, a lot of folks, when you go to that, they have um, a non-work email. It's like a personal email uh, or a phone number. That's usually a cell phone. Uh, go to yours, check it out. Um, add your work email in there. So that way people can professionally connect with you. And then the best phone number to reach you as well. Uh, When I was going down the rabbit hole on the person I could not find, I I couldn't find him on LinkedIn either, but I was really hoping that I could. It turns out there's a bunch of folks that have his name. Again, couldn't find the right one. And And I was thinking like, oh, this would be a really great way to easily connect, get the email address and phone number. But but no, no, alas, uh, still mystery guest out there. So maybe if you're listening today, <laughs> you'll be like, hey, this is me. <laughs> uh, and we'd love to open that conversation. So, all right. So <laughs> the last question I want to um, miss you to, to, to go over today, actually two last things. Uh, one, how do advisors get on the first page of Google? This is a, you know, a great question. Everyone wants to be like first page every time. How do they do it? Um, Well, it depends. First off, you need to know, again, what you want to rank for. I would say starting with your name and company name. One of the best things, A, have a website. Mm Kind of sounds, you know, our uh, listeners probably do. (laughs) And have a Google business profile and have that connected. Make sure that it's correct. Basically, you just go Google Google business profile, make sure that that's all set up. Um, That's going to be a huge factor. Lean into some of the Google products, Google business and Google search console to do that. And analytics too. And analytics as well. Yes. So get those all set up just so that you can see where you're at and understand what you're ranking for, all of that. Um, A few tips. I can't tell you how many times I've... uh, gone to an advisor's website, and I have not seen their name written out on their homepage. The advisor's name or their company? Uh, both, actually. Oh, um, on the it's... first page of Google. Okay. Or the or first page of their website. On their homepage, yes. So on their homepage, I was doing a, um, a quick website audit, and I was looking through and I was like, okay, I don't see their company name written out. Their logo was on there, but their logo is an image and it doesn't actually have the words. So I would say that have your company name written out. I know it sounds very, very simple, but that's, you know, your first keyword, right? So on your homepage, if you're saying like, what's our mission? We believe, cut the we out and say at 401k marketing, we believe, you know, so use your actual company name multiple times on your homepage because the actual written content is going to rank images. You can always name your images so that they have that, but that's, that's getting a little more down the rabbit hole. Visually, you want your logo to be seen, but you actually want it written out. So that's one thing you can without getting too nerdy and going too um, technical with it, your page titles should should have your company name and perhaps your services and location because a lot of your searches are going to be local, um, whether it's you know from the your computer knowing where you're at or somebody actually typing in the city name. Put that in your like page title. That would be very, very helpful. And then, you know, as Rebecca had mentioned, there's different uh, search features like images, videos. If you can title those, we encourage our our clients to title their anything that they're posting on the internet with their company name and their name, and then, you know, some keywords. So if you have your, your headshot on your About Us page, title that with your name and your company name. And here's a little tip with that as well. Don't use underscores if you are titling an image or a file, because those underscores are counted as search characters. Um, But dashes are not. Dashes are free spaces that you get. Um, So just a little tip. We used to do underscores for file names, and we have 
transitioned to the dashes so that they can uh, work on the internets better. All right. Well, then last question as a takeaway, uh, what can our listeners do today so that way they earn more SEO results and therefore are more findable online? Um, I think we went through a number of, of little steps that they can definitely do. Go sign up for Google Search Console. Um, make sure that that's set up. As Rebecca had mentioned, you know, go into your LinkedIn profile. Make sure that everything's turned on, that it's active. Um, so those, again, this is less about SEO and more about being found on the internet because I think that's the end goal. Starting with a... SEO strategy, I think content. So first, your your website being able to be found on that, the little tips, making sure that your company name and names are on your pages are all good first steps. And then keyword optimization, I think is a fun rabbit hole. But if you can start asking those questions, like a content, the questions that your prospects ask you starting to develop uh, content that surrounds that. And honestly, I would say content marketing is probably one of the most powerful things because you can start adding to what the internet knows about you by adding more content. So you can always edit it. You can always put more in there. And the more content, the more information that you give to Google, to search engines, the more easily found you can be. Awesome. And if anyone is looking for retirement plan content, uh, please contact us uh, and we'll give you a tour of retirement plan marketing, where it is an online marketing portal with lots and lots of wonderful specific content that speaks to plan sponsors and uh, participants as well. So the importance to wrap on SEO is that it helps you gain visibility online. When someone can easily find you, it boosts your credibility like immediately. So like, oh, that's exactly who I was hoping for. Uh, it gives you a competitive advantage when a curious Googler is looking for information and your content is the first that shows up, the snippet, the first page. Well, you become the authority. It helps you reach more people. And last but not least, it improves your overall professional reputation. So with that, Missy Jodel, thank you so much for joining today's podcast. It was a joy and a pleasure to talk to you about SEO. Thanks, everyone. Have a lovely day. And for more marketing insights, follow this podcast and please share with colleagues. Thank you so much for listening to today's 401k marketing podcast. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of our guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of 401k marketing. The content has been available for informational and educational purposes only. We hope you enjoyed.